voice, for your god Pharaoh has returned. Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game the video. Today we're taking a look at a Grixis colored tap out control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, meaning that we don't have many counter spells built around Nickel Bolas. And I started out with a 5 mana Planeswalker, Nickel Bolas, Dragon God, but after playing a few games with the deck, it became clear that I kept getting matched against the same small handful of decks, including plenty of mirror matches against other Dragon God decks, which wasn't very interesting. So instead, I decided to change my commander to Nickel Bolas, God Pharaoh instead, and so far the games have been a lot better. So the deck is mostly the same, a few small changes include more 2 mana ramp artifacts like Mindstone and Guardian Idol in the God Pharaoh deck, as these don't help us cast the Dragon God, which is 5 colored mana. And then we've got a bit more ramp in general, but you will be able to compare both deck lists, which are linked in the description in case you're interested in the Dragon God version as well. But for now we're taking a look at Nicol Bolas, a God Pharaoh, the 7 mana, 7 loyalty planeswalker, can plus 2 and then target opponent exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card, and until end of turn we may cast that card without paying its mana cost. The plus 1 makes each opponent exile 2 cards from their hand, the minus 4 deals 7 damage to target opponent, creature or planeswalker, and the minus 12 exiles each non-land permanent your opponent's control. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, which as we mentioned is a tap-out control deck, meaning we've got lots of sorcery speed removal spells and maybe more discard effects as opposed to counter spells to try and clear a path for Nicol Bolas in case the opponent is holding counter spells to counter our 7 mana commander. So at 1 mana we've got Lightning Bolt as a very efficient removal spell, and then a bunch of discard spells including Thoughtseize, Inquisition of Kozilek, Duress, and then we've got Dark Ritual, which can help us ramp out our Planeswalker as well by adding 3 black mana. Then we've got Blood Chief's Thirst as removal, that can be kicked. And Wash Away is the only actual counter spell in the deck, as for a single blue we can potentially counter the opponent's commander, but can also be a 3 mana counter spell instead. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit of a ramp with Mindstone, Guardian Idol, Cold Steel Heart and Arcane Signet. Maze Mind Tome can also smooth out our draws if we use it to scry or can be 2 mana to draw a card. Then we've got Croxa to make the opponent discard which we can eventually escape out of our graveyard. And then a ton of removal with Angras Rampage which can also hit Planeswalkers or Artifacts. Expressive Iteration as a nice card draw spell that we typically want to cast later in the game. Thought Erasure for more discard alongside Agonizing Remorse. And then more spot removal with Feed the Swarm, which can also destroy enchantments, which Grixis scholars typically struggle with once they resolve. Then we've got Heartless Act, Infernal Grasp, a Braid can deal 3 damage or destroy an artifact. And then Valky, we typically want to play as Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter at 7 mana, as another powerful planeswalker that can provide card advantage, exile artifacts or creatures, and just in general provide a ton of advantage. Then at 3 mana, we've got more ramp with Midnight Clock. And then the Celestus, Skyclave Relic and Mana Geode round out the 3 mana ramp artifacts. We've got Bedevil which can destroy artifacts, creatures or planeswalkers. And then both Colagon's Command and Prismari Command have a mode that let us destroy an artifact, which is very useful in Historic Brawl, as so many decks rely on ramp artifacts. And then Prismari Command can maybe also make a treasure to help us ramp, and Colagon's Command can also make the opponent discard, and they can also deal 2 damage to any target. Then we've got Sweltering Suns to deal 3 to each creature, can also be cycled. Soul Shatter will make the opponent sacrifice their most expensive creature or planeswalker. And Elspeth's Nightmare can also be a nice 2 for 1 if we can destroy a creature with power 2 or less, and on the second chapter make the opponent discard a non-creature, non-land card. And then Narset also very effective, especially against opposing blue decks. Then at 4 mana there's Extinction Events and Languish as additional sweepers. Hagra Mauling can be a land or a removal spell. We've got Chandra and Torch of Defiance as one of our many planeswalkers to be used as removal, card advantage or a way to ramp with the second plus 1 adding double red. One of our few creatures is Nicol Bolas the Ravager, which makes the opponent discard when it enters, but for 7 mana we can also transform it into Nicol Bolas the Arisen, so if you're tired of using Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh, you can maybe swap it out for Nicol Bolas the Ravager without having to make too many other changes to the deck. Then we also have Firemind Vessel, Hedron Archive and Key to the Archive as additional 4 mana ramp artifacts. 
and Karn Sign of Urza can provide a nice bit of Karn advantage with the plus one, helps us hit our land drops typically, and can also make some artifact tokens with the minus two, which also synergize with our other ramp artifacts. And then a cut to ribbons, more of a two mana removal spell, dealing four damage to target creature, and then the aftermath gives us a nice finisher as well with ribbons. And same goes with Consign to Oblivion, a 2-mana bound spell to return target to Nolan permanent to its owner's hand. And then afterwards we can cast Oblivion for 5-mana to make the opponent discard 2 cards. Then at 5-mana we've got a couple more Planeswalkers with Jason Raveler of Secrets, letting us draw cards with the plus 1 and bouncing a creature with a minus 2, which we can potentially use twice without losing Jace. There's Ashok Nightmare Muse, making 2-3 Nightmare tokens with the plus 1, and then a minus 3 will return a Nolan permanent to its owner's hand, and the opponent will have to exile a card from their hand as well. We've got Nickel Ball as Dragon God, still a very powerful inclusion of course, as it can destroy a creature or planeswalker with a minus 3, and the plus 1 lets us draw a card, and then each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control. And Nickel Ball as passive also lets us use abilities of other planeswalkers, so we can combine it with Nickel Ball as God Pharaoh, we can maybe use the plus 2 on God Pharaoh twice. Then we've got a bit more ramp with the Gilded Lotus, adding 3 mana of any one color and a couple more sweepers with our Hour of Devastation, dealing 5 damage to each creature and each non-Bolas Planeswalker, making them lose indestructible in the process. And we've got Crux of Fate, which can either destroy all dragons or all non-dragons. Time Warp to let us take an extra turn, which is incredibly powerful if we have one or two Planeswalkers in play, which we can activate twice. And then there's Dark Intimations as one of the Bolas Synergy cards, which is a sorcery saying each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker, then discards a card, and we return a creature or planeswalker card from our graveyard to our hand, and then draw a card. And when we cast a Bolas Planeswalker spell, we can exile Dark Intimations from our graveyard, and if we do, that planeswalker will enter the battlefield with an additional loyalty counter on it, so it gets a small bonus and makes it a little bit easier to maybe ultimate or planeswalker. If you want to play another Bolas-themed sorcery, you could also play Deliver Onto Evil, which is pretty decent if you can cast it while controlling a Bolas Planeswalker, as it will let you return 4 cards from your graveyard back to your hand. Then we also have Lear, Disciple of the Drowned, a 3-4 creature, saying spells cannot be countered, which is actually an advantage given that we only have the one counter spell in our deck, and instants and sorceries in our graveyard have flashback, so we can replay them once. And then at 6 mana we've got a bunch more Planeswalkers with Mordekainen, drawing cards and making large dog illusion tokens. Professor Onyx can make the opponent sacrifice their largest creature, can provide card advantage and gain life and drain the opponent with Magecraft. We've got Chandra Awakened Inferno which can be a nice sweeper, dealing 3 damage to each non-elemental creature or can individually take out a larger creature and then a plus 2 will slowly kill the opponent. And Ugin the Ineffable makes our colorless spells too cheaper, so it plays well with the other artifacts in the deck. And then the plus one makes a 2-2 spirit token that can also provide card advantage when it dies. And then the mana base has a couple basics here with 6 swamps, 3 islands and 3 mountains that we can also fetch up with some of our fetch lands. And then a whole host of dual lands to make sure we can cast our spells in a timely fashion. No real utility lands to speak of. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing an Eluna Apex of Wishes deck, which could mean the Omniscience combo deck, in which case having Lightning Bolt as instant speed removal is nice, we've got a bit of discard. So we're lacking the ramp to play Nicol Bolas, but I do like the interaction, plus or mana's okay. So I'll try it. And then probably want to disguise the fact that we're holding a Bolt for now. Opponent already has a plant token, so it looks like the Omniscience version. Alright, so more ways to make creatures. Inscription can draw to, and Time Warp, of course, also quite powerful. Don't think I want to take any of the ramp cards. So probably either Inscription or Time Warp. And uh, I'm leaning Inscription. And then I'm still good to play a Midnight Clock here. And then next turn I'll have to keep up Lightning Bolts.
so that all happens. Extinction event on even, I guess, also does the job. Deals with the plant and the snow-covered mountain. So, yeah, I guess we can still keep a bolt as well, just in case. And then next turn can play Croxa, maybe level up Midnight Clock. And hope the opponents cannot hard cast omniscience for 10 mana. Dark Intimations could also be fun. Maybe get back a Croxa next turn. As our opponent ditches Flood of Recollection. Yeah, opponent's gonna take an extra turn, not the most effective time warp. Even get an extra counter on the Midnight Clock, which could be an advantage. Yeah, they're gonna try and destroy that, that's fine. Get to find a basic land instead. And Shatterstorm going to make a couple 1-1s. One right, so still going to hang on to Lightning Bolt to kill the creature they try and mutate onto. And then can't quite escape Croxa. Don't want to play Nicol Bolas yet. So it's going to be Dark Intimations. And then get back Croxa from the graveyard. And keep up Lightning Bolts. And then might as well play this one tapped. Thought Seize doesn't seem necessary. Now our opponent still will have a 6 6 Luna in play, but that's a lot more manageable than having to face some expensive permanent. And then now. Kind of liking Croxa Escape Croxa, if that's a line that's available, which should be with the Fable Passage especially. Opponent will be empty-handed, and then next turn we can go to town with Nicol Bolas. Keep the Dark Intimations for our Planeswalker. Zero point stop decking. And we should be able to beat a 6 6 flyer. Rampage to find two lands, so a DIY a ramp card. The rest might as well check out their hands. And then Bolas kills Iluna. Gets an extra loyalty. And now Croxa will deal 3 damage. In addition to the 6. So they could replay Iluna here as a creature, but they're missing the land for it. And this is going to be pretty quick, so this into my hands. And then we can plus two. And I can even play a Tybalt. And attack. probably don't want to cast Path, because then they get to flash it back, and I don't really need the extra lands. Opponent makes a Squirrel, which they can now mutate onto, but opponent's empty-handed, so if they have Omniscience as their permanent, they're not going to be able to do much with it, and our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one.
All right, we're on the play, facing Ayara, mono black sacrifice deck, and my hand is okay. Crossroads on black, or I can go for blue or red, so I can iteration. But I'm gonna go for turn two tome to smooth out my early draws, and I do have more swamps in the deck than other lands, so maybe it's fine to go for blue here. And then Signets, I guess, is hard to turn down. Although land might actually be better. But it does fix my mana, so I guess we'll keep it. And then I might play turn to Signet over Tome. And then if I draw an untapped land, I could play turn 3 Archive. Opponent playing the Enforcer main phase to mill my top 2, so we actually lost the Signet. Not too broken up about it. And then we'll Tome. Next turn I can iterate and maybe hit my land drop as well. Remorse makes me exile a card from my hand, so could take the iteration, could take one of my powerful planeswalkers, we'll see. Takes the iteration in an attempt to mana screw me, stop an upkeep in case I want to scry again with Tome. Although at that point I would just probably draw if I don't find a land on top here. Ashok will bottom. And I'll just take my draw step. Found a land anyway. But I can still draw with Tome. So I think I want to draw main phase in case I find a tapped land instead. Which I did. Okay, next turn I can play Archive and still use the 2 mana to activate Tome again. Burglar Rats can have my Rampage, since they've got a ton of creatures to sacrifice that we don't care about. This comes into play untapped. So yeah, not too bad. Still missing a lot of black mana, so not close to casting Dragon God. Still need an extra Swamp to cast Professor Onyx, but I can cast God Pharaoh. Take two. Lightning Bolt's not bad, and there's my black mana for next turn. So, probably fine to Nickel Bolas, and then I can plus one make them exile two cards from their hand. Seems pretty decent. And then I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna scry with Tome or wait to draw with it. Because if I scry into an untapped black source, then uh, I could still play Onyx or Nicol Bolas. Play Crafter makes me sacrifice Nicol Bolas. Was to be expected. So probably worth it to scry to try and hit a black source. Timurit can exile stuff from my graveyard. And a Chandra is pretty decent too, can just wipe the board here. So Chandra can minus three. Timurit loses devotion, so ends up dying. Still a flying bolt for Ayara. And the Fetid Pools gives access to my author Planeswalkers. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Belladros with her bloom, so a black green ramp deck. And my hand's okay. At least the crossroads comes into play untapped. And probably fine to play Temple to look for another untapped land. And Swamp will do. So turn two we can consign if needed. Turn three, Bedevil. And then. Maybe turn 4 Archive ramps out Ugin. So it's somewhat likely that I can consign something here. Unless they play another ramp spell to put extra lands in play. Alright, in that case I'll just play a tap land here. And keep up consign over Bedevil. So 
So five mana is typically when we could see a Planeswalker. It's going to be Ayara, which does synergize quite well with Baladros. And that's fine to bounce here. Just don't want to fall too far behind on board. And now is a good window for Hedron Archive. Can still hang on to Crossroads in case I want to use it as a scry land later. And then next turn I can maybe double spell. Or even cast my commander, we'll see. They could remove my artifacts. And a casualty is as painful. So that sets us back a lot of mana. I guess just a tap land bedevil. Might as well scry. And don't need thirst. So probably gonna see Belladros here. Which we can kill, but they can still use the ability to untap all their lands. So we'll see what else they play first before deciding what to kill. Ayara's uh, fine. And that's it. So we'll kill Baladros before they make any pest tokens. Now I could time warp here just so I can take an extra turn and then play Ugin. Might be worth it since we're a bit behind on mana, or I can just make him discard two with Oblivion, which is still decent, and then hang on to Time Warp until I resolve a Planeswalker, which might be better. Also can't forget about Lair of the Hydra, which could pressure my Planeswalkers. Opponent had some nice ones in hand with Mauling and Torment. And a Voring Clax the play. Well, that's certainly worth killing. Will mean next turn I can't untap any of my lands, and I'm gonna lose Ugin in the process, but can't let Voring Clax stick around, so. Yeah, this is painful. Hopefully they can play Belladros in the meantime. And it looks like they can. And then they can make a large Lair of the Hydra next turn maybe. So we might be dead. So they can float all their mana, which is 9, untap their lands, and then have a uh, Hydra that alongside Baldros and Ayara should present lethal here. Yeah, Vorinclex did a lot of work. Basically time walked us, and we never got to cast our time warp, and never got to cast our commander either. The casualties, I guess, was uh, also a big factor. So as long as our opponent taps their mana correctly, we should be dead. All right. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Elisa, Forgotten Archangel. And my hand's pretty decent. Arcane Signet ramps out Karn, which helps me find additional lands with the plus one, as my opponents are likely to give me a land with the ability if we find two cards, including a land. Kind of postponing my decision on the pathways. All right, Fracture is a good one, killing my Signet. Although also could have destroyed a Planeswalker for what it's worth. So might go for Vessel on four, which might open up turn five Nicol Bolas. 
Although Spellbinder might have something to say about it. It's good that we have two 4-drops so they can't punish my curve too much. Bird Vessel is the pick. And we'll play Karn and need double blue for Jace. So now I could see them not giving me an unsigned client since they know the rest of my hand. So we might get Crocs instead of Steam Vents. No, still get the Steam Vents. That's okay. Play Crafter makes me sacrifice Karn. That makes sense. And we'll take three. So a couple options here. Kind of like Jace and then maybe plus. And then next turn I might get a two for one with Extinction Events on odd if they play Lisa. And then I'm happy with an untapped land. Opponent passes with four mana up. Not sure what that means, but we've got options ourselves, including Chandra killing Spellbinder. And then I can maybe wait and see what I want to do with Jace. Alright, now I feel fine plussing. Thoughtseize is good, although my mana is a little awkward here. Could have tapped differently. Opponent's got plenty of creature board wipes. Oketra could be annoying to deal with. Don't care too much about Cavalier. So yeah, the opponent's removal not quite lining up against our Planeswalkers here. Okay, so if I add mana, I can cast Nicol Bolas. And I don't care too much about emptying my opponent's hand, as these cards don't do much, so we can plus two instead. Find an authority of the consoles. And I can still plus my Jace. So our opponent's falling further and further behind here. They'll need an Elder spell to get out of it. And our opponent concedes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Nahab the Worthy. So maybe a Minotaur tribal deck, who knows. My hand's got plenty of sweepers and a scry land to help me hit a land drop here, so yeah, this might be exactly what we need in the matchup. Found another land that's good, a braid. Can be bad, but I feel like I have enough removal, so I'd rather find more mana. Maybe a planeswalker. So, gonna see a mindstone, which we could have abraded, but that's fine. There's Nahab. Probably fine to play Celestus and take a hit and then maybe next turn wipe the board. So five mana. Are we going to see more Minotaurs? We are. And a tiny bones. Okay, so that will draw a card again here once Nahab makes his discard. Probably find ditching the spot removal. Keep the sweepers. And then either Languish or Hour of Devastation. Let's go with maybe Languish. 
And keep Hour of Devastation to maybe answer a Planeswalker as well. Leer's not bad. So if I were to Dark Intimations... I don't have a creature or planeswalker to get back, but all the other modes are still effective. And we hit a land drop, perfect. So if I can play Nicol Bolas next turn, it could come into play with an extra loyalty, or I can leave Dark Intimations in the graveyard for Lear. But our opponent's not gonna like another sweeper here. So I can Hour of Devastation, wouldn't be able to Remorse. And our opponent has seen enough. One too many sweepers for the Minotaur deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Zetalpa, Primal Dawn, and my hand's decent. Some early discard. Then Rampage might be able to deal with a ramp artifact from our opponent, and key ramps into Nicol Bolas. So I'll play this tapped on red. Get to scry. Watery Grave will keep. And then I can turn to Remorse. Turn 3, Thought Erasure, although Esper Sentinel kind of throws a wrench in our plans. So I might just want to Rampage and let them draw, or I can wait a turn then Rampage might not be good enough. Although given that this is an artifact creature, Rampage is pretty likely to still get the Sentinel. Whether they play an artifact or a creature, I can still get the Sentinel. And then we'll kind of play a turn behind. Alright, so... Make the opponent sacrifice an artifact, I suppose, in case they have a flash creature. And I can pay the one. Probably fine to play key, or I could have a look first in case they have enchantments to remove my key, which would be annoying. So maybe start with a Thought Erasure here. Putin does indeed have some enchantments, but Prison Realm doesn't deal with artifacts. So, yeah, probably take the Solemn and then Prison Realm and don't care too much about Limvala and Giant Killer. And then probably discard Realm and exile Solemn in case they have a way of getting it back. Don't need Soul Shatter. And then next turn I can play Key. And all of these are pretty good. Probably once either Day of Judgment or D Spark. I guess D Spark being an answer to Zetalpa is nice. And then Bedevil can go. And we'll keep the Exile removal instead. And then next turn I can already play Nicol Bolas if I want to. Take three. Alright, Nicol Bolas, I could make them exile two cards from their hands. That seems acceptable. And then next turn I can deal with Limvala and keep leveraging my Planeswalker. Dark Ritual doesn't do a whole lot here. Now I think I'll plus two instead of plus one. Should have 
Shadow Spear also not going to do much for me. And our opponent has seen enough. I guess Shadow Spear removing Indestructible on Satalpa was too much for the opponent to handle. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Giruda, Doom of Depths. And my hand is potentially exciting with this Dark Ritual. Could maybe ramp out a Nicol Bolas Dragon God early. Or a Hedron Archive to then play my author stuff a little bit faster. Probably fine to start fetching for Swamp. And yeah, I'm not sure what line is better here. Depends if her opponent's keeping up a potential counter spell. Just a Merfolk looter. Okay. So opponent doesn't have the companion restriction, so it might just be more of a reanimator deck. So I could also Thought Erasure, maybe take away a reanimation spell. Or I could Ritual Archive, and then next turn could already play Ashiok. Which does sound powerful. And then I'm pretty close to casting a Nicol Bolas. The uh, God Pharaoh, not Dragon God. Yeah, I guess going for the Hedron Archive's fine. And hope it doesn't get bounced. Alright, did not find the untapped land we needed. So... Can still go Midnight Clock, Thought Erasure at least. And some powerful cards in hand, opponent missing black mana. So at the moment not too threatening, but they can use a looter to try and find some action. So this can take away... A non-creature card from our hand. The Murderous Rider can destroy a Planeswalker, so it's one of those two. I guess Murderous Rider can go. And just looking for lands, I think. So an untapped land would give me God Pharaoh next turn. Which sounds quite powerful. Let's see if our opponent can find black mana. A little surprised they didn't loot main phase to try and play a black land in case they need a double black on the following turn. Ah, there's a Drowned Catacomb into Panharmonicon. So double Entumor Exarch triggers would be pretty powerful. There's my land, so... Play Nicol Bolas, and then... Do I want to make them exile two cards? Probably. And hope they can't double exarch me next turn, so I can deploy more planeswalkers, but... We're still in good shape either way. Then Ashok could maybe bounce Panharmonicon. So our opponent kept exarch, but now they need to top deck a black source. And of course, if they keep the Black Source, they can't keep the Exarch. So they might just be hitting their land drops for Giruda. Nope, opponent's going for the high risk, high reward. Keep Exarch and hope for Black Mana. They get a redraw with a Looter once again. Eh, just content playing an Island. So don't need to worry about Exarch just yet. Opponent's gonna loot. They might have wanted to loot before playing the Island. In case they drew a swamp. It's gonna be a search for Ascanta. Alright, so... I think Ashok Bounce Panharmonicon's probably the safest play. And then Bolas can... plus two. And maybe find some goodies. Blood for Bones we cannot cast, as that requires a sacrifice. We can still put a count from Midnight Clock or cast a Soul Shattered Instant Speed. 
And with an extra black source we can play Dragon God, which can also maybe copy God Pharaoh's abilities. So there's Jiruda. Now I might want to Soul Shatter now, in case your opponent finds a clone effect to copy Jiruda. Just to be safe. Although there is a chance they find something even more powerful to put in play. But it looks like our opponent has seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing off against the General Kudro, so some sort of human tribal deck. And my hand is missing any form of interaction, no removal or sweepers, which is what we probably need in this matchup. Although double ramp artifacts can get a Nickel Bolas out pretty soon, which may or may not be good enough. I guess it's worth a shot on the play. And then Narset could maybe find something too. Okay, Agonizing Remorse is perfect. Can have a peek. And what do we see? Don't really care about Crippling Fear. Sentinel is decent but beatable. Opportunists also not too threatening. So it's between Sentinel and Cold Steel. I guess Sentinel applies the most pressure if they curve Sentinel into Kudro. So that's probably the pick. And then... It's going to be a triumphant adventure, so not a bad draw. Probably want to get Midnight Clock going first, so it picks up more counters over time. Opponent's going to go for Kudro to pump their team. And then... Hopefully we can find some interaction soon. And goes for the Opportunist instead. So not quite willing to commit their commander yet. So that buys us a little bit more time. Alright, so if I play Celestus, I'm unable to play Narset unless I play the untapped land. Or I can play the tapped land Celestus and next turn be guaranteed Nicol Bolas. Narset is somewhat likely to find good interaction though. And then I can still play Onyx at least. So I think that's okay. Plus we could always draw an untapped land. Alright, Thirst will do. So that can at least answer Kudro. So for opponent gains 2, they still can't quite activate Speaker since they need 32 or more life. Now we could also Professor Onyx and Minus, but then we'll lose Onyx on the following turn. So I think it might just be a kicked Blood Chief's Thirst on Kudro. And then play a tapped Sulphur Smire. Acquisitions Expert gets to see my entire hand, so it can take Onyx. And next turn it's time for Bolas, which can maybe start plussing. It's a lot of small creatures to pump with Kudro next turn. And they will be able to cast it, so Bolas could die to one big attack. Which is not what we wanted. Feed the swarm. Yeah, so play Bolas and then 
Probably got a plus two. Hope to find some good creature. Next turn, Speaker of the Heavens can also start activating. So the alternative would be Feed the Swarm Speaker. And then I can put some counters on Midnight Clock, but not enough to transform it. So yeah, time for Bolas. And that's quite a draw. Couldn't draw a sweeper in our deck, but our opponent's deck delivered. And now we're in a great spot all of a sudden. With an active Planeswalker, removal in hands, and a Midnight Clock. Slowly reaching 12 counters. Alright, closing statement is an answer to Bola, sadly. Fetch up a swamp. A tactical retreat is in order. And I should be able to replay it right away. Let's see. Six, seven, eight, nine. Math checks out. Still, I think plus twoing instead of plus one. They have a cave that can pressure Bolas, but we know that Crippling Fear is not a particularly powerful card. And I guess we'll play a 3-1. And uh, this doesn't matter. Dire Tactics deals with Evangel. Works for me. And they could replay Kudro. Or a Torment of Scarabs to play instead. And I will lose some life, that's fine. Can use Feed the Swarm to answer the Torments. Infernal Grasp, no targets. Just gotta watch out I don't die to the cave here, but we've got a Midnight Clock. So we'll be able to find more action soon. Hopefully including some life gain or instant speed removal. So I think the opponent's best bet is just animating cave and going face. And that's what they do. Probably wanted to put an extra counter on Midnight Clock before taking three in case I found an answer. Which I did with Soul Shatter. So yeah, I guess we'll fire it off now. And yeah, opponent has to concede here. Nicol Bolas leaves them no choice. Alright, so we got to see our Grixis control deck in action. And I've been having a lot more fun playing Nicol Bolas God Pharaoh compared to Dragon God. So if you're running into the same issues, just uh, try swapping out your commander and you might have better results. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.